Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Welcome back to the Faith Revival. So we've really spoken about the impact of sin on faith, the impact of uh, the pursuit of wealth and, and envy and stinginess, and we've, we've spoken about a lot of things. But what about good deeds that actually can hurt your iman? What does that mean? The Prophet ﷺ says, لَنْ يَشَادُ الدِّينِ أَحَدْ No one uh, uh, overburdens themselves with the religion. No one exaggerates or goes to extremes with the religion. إِلَّا غَلَبَ Except that the religion defeats him. That's powerful. The religion defeats you. The religion actually crushes your iman. What is the Prophet ﷺ talking about? He says, فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَغْدُوا وَرُوحُوا He said, so be moderate and proceed uh, gradually. وَغْدُوا وَرُوحُوا And worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and between Asr and Maghrib. وَشَيْءٌ مِنَ الدُّلْجَةِ وَالْقَصْدَ الْقَصْدَ تَبْلُغُوا And a little bit in the last part of the night and proceed moderately, moderately, and you will reach your goal. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us that sometime, sometimes the most detrimental thing to your iman is when you set unreasonable expectations for it. When you have this sudden burst, that catalyst that we spoke about a few episodes ago, you have that sudden burst and this want to just take it all on at once. I've been so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now I need to grab everything. So I need to go from being this uh, wicked transgressor, this sinner, to being a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Like I need to get to that level tomorrow because I've done so much bad in my life, I need to jump into this. The Prophet ﷺ witnessed that in his life and he warned people from going to extremes with good deeds because it will crush your iman when you can't maintain that output. And there are many examples of that. You know, every fundraiser, in, uh, in Ramadan, and of course it is the Yaqeen fundraiser, so please donate to Yaqeen. Every fundraiser in Ramadan, uh, you'll see people quote Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and they'll say that Abu Bakr gave all of his wealth for the sake of Allah, and Umar gave half of his wealth for the sake of Allah, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised Abu Bakr and Umar. However, what they won't tell you um, is that the Prophet Sallallahu actually stopped other people from giving all of their wealth. Why? Because he recognized that that was unreasonable. So when people came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, I want to give it all for Allah, he said, Amsik alayk ba'd al-mal. You should hold some of it for your family. You should not give it all up. They said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to give it all up. The very famous story in, uh, in Surah Ali Imran, Lan tanalu al-birra hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibboon. You will not achieve Jannah or righteousness until you give of that which you love. Abu Talha comes to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, I want to give my most beloved garden. The Prophet ﷺ says, Ara an taj'alaha fil aqrabin. It's better if you leave it for your family or donate it to your, to, to your relatives. Because he understood وسلم, that these people might be depressed afterwards because they'd recognize that they went too far. Abu Bakr عنه, on the other hand, his iman was secured. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ allowed some people to fast more than others. There are companions that fasted every day. There are companions that fasted every single day except for the two Eids. He didn't allow that for other people because he knew that it was unreasonable, that the expectation was too much. So he tells uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As ta'ala anhu that the best fasting is the fasting of Dawood If you really want to fast, and he took him through the, 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 the equation. First try Mondays and Thursdays, try three days of the month. Okay, you want more? Then don't go beyond fasting alternate days because he recognized Abdullah ibn Amr was too overzealous and he was too young and he was trying to do it all at once. Trying to pray all night. He, I want to pray all night long, Ya Rasulullah. I don't want to wait till the last third of the night to start praying. And what did the Prophet ﷺ tell him? He said, Ya Abdullah. He said, listen to me. Oh Abdullah. لا تكون كرجل كان يقوم الليل فترك. Don't be that guy that comes later on in life and says, I remember when I used to pray Qiyam al-Layl. And then he just abandoned it altogether. Because it became too burdensome, because the bar he set was way too high. And so people need to understand that I need to set short-term goals and long-term goals. Long-term, we all have something to strive for. We will never surpass the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. So long-term, I want to get here. Short term, I can't go from not reading Qur'an at all to reading the Qur'an three times a month. I need to start somewhere. I can't go from not praying my five prayers on time to praying all night long or to saying that I'm going to pray Qiyam al every night. Start with your five prayers. I can't go from barely fasting Ramadan to trying to fast every other day, going straight to the fasting of Dawood alayhi salam. 
If you set unrealistic goals for your faith, you will feel defeated when you're unable to meet those goals. So what do you have to do? You have to set goals that you can achieve, inshallah. Once you achieve these goals in baby steps, then you build on them, inshallah ta'ala. You don't start with, with these lofty goals, you build on them. And there's a methodology that Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah says with our faith that's very profound. He says that you leave sin immediately. You don't gradually get off of a sin. Once you recognize you're sinning, you immediately cut it out of your life. Because if you leave it in any capacity or any proportion, it's only a matter of time before you dive into it altogether. But you build good deeds gradually. So rapidly detach from sin, slowly and gradually attach to good habits and good practices to build your Iman. Otherwise, you will fall short because you're going to feel like you, you know, you're, you're not sufficient. And if you set a goal for yourself, and you're not able to meet that goal, then readjust the expectation and readjust the goal. Don't give it up altogether. So if you say from now on, I'm going to pray Qiyamul Layl two times a week and you're finding it too difficult, don't say, well, I tried doing Qiyamul Layl, it didn't work. Then do one time a week, inshallah ta'ala. If you said from now on, I'm going to read this many pages of Quran and it didn't work, cut it in half, inshallah. But keep on going. Don't detach from it altogether. Otherwise, again, it will be a depression of faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to proceed with moderation towards him and not be overburdened by a religion that is meant to provide ease and tranquility to our hearts. Allahumma ameen. See you all next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.